Live from the Austin Convention Center in Austin, Texas, it's The Cube at Dell World 2014. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Austin, Texas, everybody. Stu and I are really pleased to have Bob Wallace on. He's vice president of Nutanix. Nutanix is a company that we've been covering for some time at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE and had on theCUBE many, many times. Bob, welcome to theCUBE. It's great to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. So we were all really struck by the, uh, the Dell Nutanix deal. It was really interesting. We had Alan Atkinson on yesterday. He talked quite a bit about it as the, one of the catalysts for that deal. But uh, let me start with Dell World. What do you think of Dell World? Is this your first time here? Or? Yeah, it's actually it is my first time here. It's, it's great. We've uh, been working with the Dell reps and teams for quite a while since we signed the OEM agreement. But this is the first real opportunity we've had to uh, get in front of a lot of customers, very close to launch. We're launching the product on Monday and uh, sit down with customers and talk to them about it in depth. Have a lot of customers coming by the booth, uh, really digging into the XC series and, uh, and a lot of Dell reps. So for us it's been an ideal kind of venue to do the launch around. So Stu, Allen talked yesterday about sort of how this deal came about and one of the ways it came about, Bob, was that it hit the radar because Nutanix was so hot, mm -hmm. had so much momentum in the marketplace, everybody was talking about it, <clears throat> you know, for good reason. The architecture, the people, you know, the customer proof points, I mean, all of that led to, hey, maybe we should be working with mm -hmm. these guys. From mm -hmm. your perspective, how did the deal sort of come about? Uh, I think um, I, I think it's kind of, uh, from, from what I understand, I was involved in, in the early parts of the deal, but uh, our biz dev folks uh, got a call from somebody uh, on the product group uh, at Dell who had really understands the storage market and was looking at what Nutanix had been doing and uh, just started the conversation. I think it, it, it started out fairly informally. Uh, Dell and Nutanix throughout the, the subsequent uh, agreements and negotiations and everything, we found there was a lot of synergy between the teams. The way that that team and the Dell team that we interacted with uh, operate, a uh, very kind of authentic group of folks. That's really how uh, Nutanix culture is really very similar to that, where um, not, not a lot of big egos, uh, but uh, authentic, just trying to get things done. And so we moved really fast. I understand for, for Dell's uh, uh, pace and the way that they typically would execute on these agreements, the agreement with Nutanix happened in a matter of months, uh, really? very quickly. Wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Well, of course, Dell has some experience with large OEM deals, yes. and uh, this is you know, not quite as large as some of their previous ones, but, but and, and the, the industry has matured somewhat, Stu, you know, since that, but, so that's quite yeah. fascinating. Yeah, Bob, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I want, want to talk to you a little bit about just kind of the changing model of IT. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I look at Nutanix, uh, you know, your founders of the co company like, really came from you know some of the big companies. Like it was Google and mm -hmm. Facebook and yep. a new way of doing IT. And if you look at what in the Google uh, you know uh, data centers, you're not going to find you know branded hardware. Mm. Uh, and when Nutanix first launched, you know, as an analyst, we kind of you know dig under the covers like, oh, okay, wait, there's a super micro, mm -hmm. and Nutanix actually tried out even Quanta for a little bit and then went back to Supermicro. One right. of the things Dave and I were talking about is if I'm Dell and we're seeing this growing, we're saying, hey, wait, you know, we've got all these storage solutions that run on Dell platform. How can mm. we have you know, one that's growing so fast not use Dell mm. hardware? So for, from that standpoint, I think they want to get involved. But can you talk about you know, your customers? You know, most of them, it's not you know, what server is inside the box, it, it's the new IT. So you know, does adding Dell hardware change that message at all, or yeah. you know, how, how does that message come together? Yeah, one of the key, one of the key elements of, of web scale, which is really what Nutanix product does, is uh, hyperconvergence. And so the hardware itself, the fact that the compute and storage and all the elements are in a single, um, in a single box, in a single appliance, is critical to web scale. And uh, having the opportunity to work with Dell really makes that a big uh, a big chunk of our value proposition now when we do work with Dell, where before it was something that we uh, frankly would downplay you know, on the hardware side, now it becomes a strength. When our sales teams and Dell sales teams go out and they're selling the XC series, they can really take advantage of the fact that the Dell hardware brings real value to the table and uh, the Dell uh, support and pro services bring a lot of value to the table when we combine that with 
uh, the Nutanix software and distributed file system. And, and my understanding is that it's a technology deal. Dell is going to be selling the product. You yes. guys aren't selling mm -hmm. the product to your channel. Dell didn't do business with you to get your channel. I mean, right. uh, they they yep. got the massive channel, right? So, so you guys must have been excited about this. I mean, it's sort of serendipitous, opportunistic. <clears throat> you know, happened. You know, because somebody took the initiative. Yeah. Um, stuff like that happens, I guess, all the time. But oh, yeah. interesting, Texas and the Valley getting together like that. Have you seen things like this in the past? Um, I haven't personally. I think that it, to me it wasn't a surprise because, uh, again, our company culture, our, our mm -hmm. leader, uh, our CEO D Ridge, is very. Um, there's a, there's a. Uh, a philosophy that we could always be doing something better. We could always, we're always looking for uh, a, a way to improve how we do things and how we go to market. And he's very, uh, Sadish, who's, who's our VP of Worldwide Sales, is the same, where we're always looking for an opportunity to do what we do, but do it better. And this gives us that opportunity. Uh, we have our existing business and then build on top of that uh, this business with Dell that really gives us the opportunity to take advantage of their product, but as you said, also gives us the opportunity to tap into their sales force and their channels and uh, open up a whole new area where Nutanix wouldn't have been able to touch for so, a long time. So Bob, what are you seeing in the marketplace? Because one of the questions we often ha have, we get from practitioners is, Dell's got like one of everything. I mean, there's so much stuff. But as, as Joe Tucci's fond of saying, it's better to have overlap than it is to have mm. gaps. Mm. But were you, running into, who do you run into in the marketplace? I mean, you've got obviously the big guys, the big system vendors. Were you seeing Dell in the marketplace? Were you competing against them in some situations? Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously Dell's in a lot of places and their sales reps are out there talking to a lot of customers. Right. So we did see Dell in a lot of the deals that we're working on uh, and that we've closed in the past. Uh, we, I, I'd say we compete more with some of the other big legacy storage and, and uh, and compute vendors a little bit more than uh, we have with Dell. Um, that's really what we're seeing. Our, our, the, the majority of our wins are displacing kind of legacy infrastructure with this, with a, you know, the web scale approach. It's a very different sale where we're talking to the customer about how the data center should look and what they expect to see in the data center in five years, as opposed to a you know, uh, what's the speed of this drive or adding flash into, uh, as a band-aid into some kind of a storage system. So are they looking, but I mean all those guys, whether it's IBM, HP, you know, e e EMC slash VCE Cisco, they all have solutions that are converged mm. that, that solve a, a problem that those legacy systems have, which is the labor intensity. Yep. Why are they jumping you know, the checkerboard mm. to Nutanix. Um, I think the um, con converged is a word that has, uh, in, some, in some cases, been overused. I mean, marketing people, you know, if they hear something they like and the customers respond to, they'll use it. A lot of the legacy systems aren't really converged. They're, that's why we use the term hyper-converged, because realistically what they've done is they've skew-converged products. They, they, they will sell you on a one skew a whole bunch of products, but they all come separately and they have to come build them on site into one box. Or maybe they ship it in one box, but functionally that operates still as a bunch of separate units, where Nutanix actually does true convergence. The compute, storage, flash, memory is all uh, converged in one appliance. And the, uh, the other key piece is it needs to be software defined. So it's the software that does the, the is the differentiator for Nutanix and bringing that all together. It's all software defined. So that's why the, the pairing of Nutanix and Dell is such a, a key thing because the hardware is a big part of it and then we have best in class hardware now with Dell overlaying best in class true converged software. So by implication Nutanix. you're driving more value. You're saying the other guys essentially are scratching the surface at the value proposition. You're taking it one step further. Yeah, I think. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, no, that's, that's what I'm a, inferring it, from what it's, you said. It's, it's not even that. I think that it's their they're saying that it's converged in a way to fool customers to think that they're actually buying something that's different, and what they're buying is just the same thing. They make it easier to order, they're not changing the way that anything happens. If we took that technology out five years, there is no true change that happens there. There's no innovation in that approach. So yeah. Stu, you're, I know you're a fan. Well, that last part was quite interesting, no innovation. Even Steve Mills himself said, when, they, when IBM announced the integrated systems, that it was evolutionary. 
Um, you don't describe your technology, I presume, as evolutionary. No. Stu, you, you're a fan of Nutanix, you've been following this stuff for a long time. What's yeah. your take on all so, this? So, uh, I think we talked about you know, the, the channel and all the other pieces. The other thing we haven't talked about yet is really the, the primary use case or application that we're going to see deployed first is uh, you know, VDI. Mm -hmm. And Nutanix really had a lot of VDI deployments. And Dave, when we first started theCUBE back in 2010, Dell was one of the only companies that really came with to us with customers that employed you know multi thousand node you know VDI. I remember that at, at VMworld 2010. Yeah, you're remember right. it was Brown Shoe yeah, Company at uh, VMworld. So yeah, there were know, a bunch of Dell, Dell customers. You're right. Dell has you know if we look at the VDI marketplace, one of the biggest challenges were there's so many pieces. It's you know yeah. not only it's you know the hypervisor and the uh, you know the agents and mm. you know the client piece and all of those uh, different solutions and even you know Dell bought Wise, which brought them some of the client pieces. Mm -hmm. but they had strong relationships on the virtualization side and they had really a practice to help customers through that and uh, when it really, you know, I've gotten to spend some time talking to both the Dell team and the Nutanix mm -hmm. team, Dell has a group called the CCC yep. uh, that works on this type of application and we actually just published some, some new research uh, from Wikibon looking at this solution and how if, if you, you know, even if you take a white box solution, not saying taking kind of legacy you know, stuff, but even if I took a white box solution and spun my own VDI deployment mm -hmm. and compared that against a you know, fully integrated stack from Dell and Nutanix, th th there's just, uh, you know, it's going to cost you less over that three year period yeah. to do that. So uh, I, I guess, Bob, could talk a little bit about kind of the, the VDI solution mm -hmm. and, and beyond. Where do you see yeah. the use cases for the-, the, the, the Yeah, I think VDI offer. specifically, um, we've seen a lot of success there, not that we're uniquely tailored toward VDI, but we found that VDI, because of the way that we can scale IOPS as you scale, um, and everything scales out as opposed to scaling up where you're pushing it through uh, a legacy infrastructure with two storage controllers. Um, because of that, I've seen that the world is littered with uh, half-baked VDI deployments where there's a lot of companies who do their first piece of the deployment, they'll deploy to 100 users and they'll see it works fine, and then as they try and scale, the infrastructure cannot keep up with scale of VDI because of the way that it scales. So we've had a lot of success there simply because there's many uh, situations where customers are in this half deployed mode and they don't want to back out of it and call it dead. And when you, you put Nutanix into that equation, we actually bring true scalability to the table. You deploy one, you deploy one node and it can handle 100 VDI users, then you know you're going to get 100 VDI users out of every single node you deploy. So yeah, you Bob, can scale linear. Bob, it, it, it's so true. I go back to about, uh, almost four years ago, we actually did a bunch of research. We actually had uh, Jason Langoni, who's now mm -hmm. on your federal team, yep. before he was with Nutanix, talking and said there were two reasons why uh, VDI uh, deployment failed. Number one is performance, usually was the problem. We really underestimated how much resources we need, and Flash, in mm -hmm. many ways, solved that. So every single company that has flash in their solution, whether yeah. it's just shoving some in an old array, yeah. an all flash array, fusion IO, everybody that's got flash is saying, oh my God, people are coming at me to do VDI. But it's the second piece, when I go from pilot to production and really start scaling yeah. and adding users, do I keep that performance and can it grow? And, and that's where you know you guys really shine yep. because I can just, adding a node is so simple. It's literally, I plug it in and yeah, two I'm clicks, done. You're and, done you and know. it scales and you know it's going to work and you have that predictability. So. That's what customers want, I've found with VDI. They, they want to be able to scale it predictably and not have these huge cost cliffs that they run into because they need to deploy additional infrastructure to try and keep up with the performance requirements. It, it, it hits right at the heart of Nutanix scalability. Yeah, so, so Bob, two things I want you to, to tell us about the deal. Number one is, uh, it's my understanding that there, there's no ownership stake mm -hmm. uh, fr from the Dell standpoint. And two, can you talk about the channel? Because you know, there are some that you know, look at Dell's history in the storage world, uh, and you know, is Dell going to pull everything direct, or are they going to be channel friendly? What have you seen so mm -hmm. far? Yeah, so uh, it's two very different uh, questions. So yeah, uh, on the ownership stake, yeah, this is a an OEM agreement. It's not a uh, uh, acquisition. It's not anything else beyond that. It's really two companies who, you know, Dell recognizes Nutanix can be a really big piece in their software defined approach, and uh, are some bold steps that I see Dell making to really redefine and define their own future and differentiate in a big way and take advantage of their privatization to do something really decisive and bold. Uh, so that's really, there's a lot of synergy there between the two of us. 
On the channel piece, uh, Nutanix as a company has, has been channel friendly since we started. We've never sold direct. We only sell through channel partners. So we've, we've um, when we first started talking with Dell about OEM, their ESG organization is really at this time has a big push to, to embrace the channel and expand their channel footprint and how much of their business goes through channel partners. So in those early discussions that we did have, that was a big piece of it is how do we make sure that we can leverage that channel and the, the Nutanix cultural kind of channel friendliness, we've seen a lot of benefit from that. And we have a good number of channel partners that have been existing Nutanix channel partners that are Dell channel partners. And up until now, they, they might be you know, to choose one solution or the other. And now they have the opportunity to work through the Dell's channel program and get the best of both worlds. Okay, so how, how, how about the customers? Obviously, you guys haven't shipped anything yet, but what's been the response from customers and uh, you know, what, what do you guys expect from mm. kind of a sales ramp? Yeah, so a, a lot of my time uh, over the last uh, you know, five months has been spent training and, and helping the Dell field team uh, understand our value proposition and integrate it into their own. Uh, a huge, uh, up until now, that we don't launch the product until Monday. Uh, we actually have already gotten a couple orders uh, for the XC series, so it was pretty impressive the amount of uh, really demand that there is within Dell's customer base for this kind of a solution. We've had overwhelming interest from Dell's field sales organization because I think they see that it gives them an opportunity to go in with something different and a new message, and it really can open doors in accounts that maybe have been um, not open to them in the past, but also Dell's existing accounts and customers, it gives them the opportunity to bring something new to the table and really show up with an innovative kind of message that lives up to the, you know, Dell's um, is making uh, some, some of these bold moves towards changing the landscape. Bob, at VMworld this year, there was a lot of buzz, of course, about Evo Rail. We had Diraj on, and, and of course, he said what anybody would say in his position, validation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Steve Harrod came on and sort of hit one right down the middle, said, yep, yeah, validation and interesting discussions with customers. What have, since that announcement, of course, Dell was a big part of that, what kind of discussions have gone on with customers, and what do you tell them when they ask you about Evo Rail, where does it fit, how does it relate? Mm -hmm. um, we do, I, I think Evo Rail comes up a lot in discussions. And um, uh, I, I think, I, from a sales perspective, I haven't really, I str have struggled to find a successful implementation. So that's usually my approach as, a, as somebody who's talking to my customers about technology, is find some of them that are using it and say, hey, well, let's, tell me a little bit about how it works. You know, how's it working for you? Mm -hmm. So at this point, uh, to me, vSAN Rail has been a competitor in discussion, a competitor on paper, a competitor paper at shows like mm -hmm. this where mm -hmm. it gets talked about a lot, but frankly I haven't seen a lot of actual, uh, where the rubber meets the road action out of kind of vSAN rail. I think there's a challenge that any vendor who's offering that product is going to run into in their sales organization and that they're essentially guaranteeing themselves three competitors who offer the exact same product uh, for the most part uh, at, in any deal they go into. They go in and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in front of my customer. Now you've got all these guys coming out of the can that offer the same thing from a software perspective and it's going to be a race to who can discount the most. So you need more data before you can really comment on, yep. on that. Yeah, fair enough. All right, Bob, well listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. We'll leave it there. I really appreciate your time. Yep, thanks all right, for having me. Keep right there, everybody. Michael Dell will be up very shortly. Uh, this is theCUBE, we're live from Dell World 2014, we'll be right back.